sermons on people saying that we're going to hear a trumpet and that trumpet's going to say, get to church. And then we're going to be gathered together as a church. And we are in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. Uh, we'll start there. But as you can see, you have different dilemmas. Pharaoh has seen all these plagues. And yet the magicians have even said, this is the hand of God. But he's not thinking logically. He is thinking emotionally. Women think emotionally. Men think logically. Pharaoh's problem is his heart has been hardened by God, and so he's thinking like a woman. Emotional. He's already asked for prayer twice. He's already admitted he's a sinner. But so did Judas. Judas, before he hung himself and denied, before he uh, turned uh, Jesus in for 30 pieces of silver, he went to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and said, give me some money and I'll turn over Christ. I'll let you know exactly where he's at. He got right. But to the wrong people. He went back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and said, listen, I done wrong. And they said, we really don't care. That's what religion does. They don't care. They have no compassion. They have no mercy. They have, that's how you can tell a, a, a religious cult. No compassion. No mercy. Too bad. You got to deal with it by yourself. Man, what kind of church is that? I mean, what kind of religion is that that has no compassion and has no mercy? They could have said, go talk to Jesus. He's still alive. He's still hanging on the cross. He'll forgive you. And one Jesus. Judas went out and hung himself, died. His bowels opened up. His stomach ripped open when he fell. His guts fell all over the ground. And he died. Went to hell. It's like he went all the way up to heaven and kissed the doorknob of heaven's gates and kissed the gates and said, Bye. That's how close he was to the Lord. Pharaoh is close. All these bad things are happening is for one reason. To harden Pharaoh's heart and to show God's people there is a better way of living. And sometimes God will do something to somebody to show you, hey, you don't want that to happen. You don't want that happening to you. Why don't you straighten up? Amen. Verse 21, The Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven. There might be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. What did he say? You're going to feel the darkness. You ever been in the room? One time me and my dad went to go see the exorcist. We, we was, he was, I was a young boy at the time, probably about young teenager, and I stuck my hand around my dad like this, you know. And I touched him. He went, ah! <laughs> and my dad went, ah! I've never seen my dad jump before in my life. Then he cussed me out like I deserved it. Amen? Amen. But he felt something. What did he do? He felt something in the darkness. This is what's happening to Egypt. Not only can you put your hand in front of your face and not see your hand, you are feeling the darkness. Well, you just all in your mind. Oh, that ain't your mind. I mean, God put, it, God put it that way. He said, you feeling it, man. It's good to have Susie here. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward him. There was a thick darkness for what? Three days. How long was Jesus buried? Three days. Three days. 
And they saw not one another, neither rose from in his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had what? Light. They played outside. Can you imagine this wall? Let's pretend it's a wall outside, and you walk outside, and you see, well, let's see, what was the two neighborhood? You see no anything, you see Epson, and Epson's in the dark. You can see the darkness. You walk outside, and you go, <laughs> You guys have a good time over there in the dark. Because <laughs> I'm in the light, having a great time. I ain't got nobody messing with me. I'm having a wonderful time. But right, we took the day off. We's eating, we's drinking, we's playing, and we're having a great time. So what does Pharaoh do? He calls for Moses. Go back. Serve your Lord. Only let your flocks and herds be stayed. This guy's always got some type of stipulation. Sort of like my customers, all right? They always want something. All right? You know, yes, you can have it, but you got to give me this. And Moses said, well, what do you expect us to do for a burnt offering? You got all the herds. Well, you know, you want me to take some Egyptians with me? We can serve, we can serve them up to the Lord, I guess. You know, I, I guess we can kill a couple of your children or a couple of your, you know, old women or old men. Would you like me to do that for you? He said, no. We take it out of everything, baby. <laughs> Verse 26, there ain't going to be one hook left in Egypt that belongs to Israel. Nothing. We taking every chicken, every dove, every egg. We taking it all. Mm. Everything's leaving. So what happens? The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He wouldn't let him go. Three days of darkness. You can feel the darkness. Put your hand in front of your hand. Put your hand in front of your eyes. Can you see nothing? All the other plagues. He's going to pray twice. Please pray for me. He, pray, he says, I'm a sinner. He admits he's a sinner. Still not saved. Why? Talking to the wrong person. You don't tell the preacher you're a sinner. You tell God. You get, you get a hold of God. I cannot save you. Amen. I can point you to Jesus Christ on the cross. I can point you toward heaven and say, that's the guy you need to get right with. That's the one, amen, you need to talk to. That's the one, amen, that will forgive you. It's amen. not me. Amen. I don't make those decisions. My pay, my pay cut is not that large. It goes beyond what I can do. I can only point. I can only tell you how to live. Your job is to do it. And then Pharaoh threatens Moses. He said, next time I see your face, you're going to die, sucker. What do you think about that? <laughs> Ain't going to let me keep the animals. I don't know. Y'all can go, but y'all got to leave something here. Amen. And, and Moses said, well, I tell you what, I'm, I ain't going to see your face no more either. What do you think about that? <laughs> Chapter 11 the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to bring one more play. He said, now, nah, I'm going to give you the short version. He said, go talk to the people and tell everybody we're going to borrow from your neighbors. Now, your neighbors, the Egyptians, I love the way God talks. He's the original monster. He is the original mafia guy. We're going to borrow some stuff. Hey, you know, I like to borrow that necklace. You know, you see some lady, and I want them gold rings and, and the, the matching, uh, uh, what do you call it, earrings, and I, I want the dresses. I want, I, want, I want to borrow about 10 of your best-looking dresses and 10 pairs of your best-looking shoes, and I need to borrow all the money that you have because I'm going to borrow. <laughs> when are you going to return it back? A couple thousand years. I don't know. Yeah. But God said, go borrow it. He didn't say, go steal it. He didn't say, give it to me. God said, go borrow. Amen. 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 If you didn't get, I mean, if you didn't get that, I do not understand you one bit. Amen. Amen. 
But you love God the way He talks. Amen. He don't talk like no way else. We're going to make them a deal that they cannot refuse. You say, who made the deal? God did. He was the original Godfather. He's the one that said, go borrow everything you can go, that you can get your hands on. <laughs> go to your masters. Tell them, empty out your bank account. Give me all your gold. Give me all your clothes. Give me everything you got. I want all your hurt. I need everything. Amen. Jewelry. Silver, jewelry, gold. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the gym. Guess what? The people are saying, yes, you can have it, man. If you'll pray for me, if you'll leave us alone, you can have everything you got in my house. I mean, you want my daughter? You can have her, too. All right, you don't want my sons? You can have them, too. All right, you can have anything you want in my house. So, about midnight, he said, the Lord's going to go out. And everybody that's firstborn is going to die in Egypt, including Pharaoh, maid servants, all the way down. Everybody, they're going to be a great cry, verse 6. But the children of Israel, not a dog, will move his tongue against man or beast. You know what God said? I ain't killing nothing that belongs to Israel. means my dog's protected. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm a child of the king. Hallelujah. <laughs> and my dog went down this life.